Our days on Earth are numbered. In the far future, our life-giving sun will engulf us all. And even now, we're sitting ducks in a celestial shooting gallery. An asteroid could strike our planet at any time. Meanwhile, global warming threatens to cause mayhem. Droughts could strike. Ice caps could melt. And rising sea levels could drown us all. Perhaps our only option is to get out of town. To search for a new home far out among the stars and boldly go where no human has ever gone before. Founding a new colony on a planet in a distant solar system could be the human race's only chance of survival. But it will be a quest more perilous than any we've undertaken before. Danger will lurk at every turn, and we might ultimately become a new species, one that's not quite human. At the moment, a journey to the stars is just fantasy. But real-life scientists in real-life laboratories are working on making it reality. Once you go off into outer space, you're not going to come back. That group of people will evolve into a different species. For things like space travel, if humans could hibernate, that's a way that we could remain intact for a longer period of time. The most efficient way to populate the space crew is to begin with young couples. But before we start looking for volunteers, we need to find a destination. And we're a delicate species, with a long list of requirements. To survive, we need oxygen, water, heat and food. Basically, we need a planet just like Earth. We've sent probes to Mars and to Saturn already, but they're unable to sustain us. We need to look further from home much further. Since 1995, astronomers have discovered more than 100 planets orbiting distant stars beyond our solar system, and they're finding more every year. Could one of them meet our needs? Engineer David Miller is helping to design the Terrestrial Planet Finder, a revolutionary telescope that might be able to pinpoint our perfect home. Given how many planets we're finding, I would love to be able to identify one that would say clearly once we have the capability, that's the place to go. Like Earth, our new home must be near enough to its star to keep us warm. But if it's that close to its sun, we'll never be able to see it. The aim of Miller's planet finder is to block out the blinding light of the stars and reveal their hidden planets. Then, once the giant telescope has locked onto a planet, it will detect oxygen and other gases. It will even tell if the planet has water. If we could really identify and point up in the sky and say that planet has a pale blue dot around it, that has oceans and atmosphere that we might be able to breathe, I think that would really give us a new perspective on our place in the universe. In as little as 10 years, we could be able to find an Earth-like planet. But space is infinitely vast. So just how long would our journey to that planet take? NASA's fastest vehicle is the Voyager Interplanetary Probe. Its top speed is more than 62,000 kilometers per hour, the equivalent of getting from Edinburgh to Cairo in less than four minutes. But it would still take eight years to get to Pluto and getting to our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, would mean 70,000 years in space. To reach Earth 2, we'll need something much faster. Most propulsion in space uses a basic principle, as demonstrated here by Dr. George Schmidt concept is best illustrated using a balloon. Fill the spacecraft with propellant. 
and then ignition, it produces a thrust. Rocket thrust can get us to escape velocity, the 40,000 kilometers per hour required to break free from the grip of Earth's gravity. 17 Houston, you are go for orbit. Go for but the trouble with rockets is the faster they go, the more fuel they need. More fuel means a heavier ship, and a heavier ship must have more fuel. It's a classic catch-22. So is it possible to build a ship away from Earth's gravity, the same way the International Space Station was built? Once in space, it takes minimal energy to accelerate. Like a hockey puck on ice, a little tap could send us a long way. So instead of using gas-guzzling rockets, we could travel in something light and fuel-efficient. Something like NASA's Deep Space One, which travels at 56,000 kilometers per hour. It was launched in 1998 and is powered by a super-efficient ion engine. Instead of chemical fuels, this engine ejects electrically charged gases to propel itself forwards. But even ion engines carry fuel. Can we build a ship that needs no propellant at all? Imagine a spring-loaded mast releasing a sail the size of a football field, a solar sail. Sunlight bounces off the aluminium and gives it a tiny push. It accelerates and accelerates, theoretically to 160,000 kilometers per hour. This isn't science fiction. NASA is currently testing sail material, although on a small scale. Solar sails could travel vast distances, but speed remains a problem. Solar sails are probably the best candidate for exploring regions beyond the solar system, but still we're going to be talking about thousands of years transit time. That's still far too long for our journey. But there is another idea out there, albeit one that might sound fantastic, antimatter. Physicist Michio Kaku explains. Anyone who's seen Star Trek wonders, well, why can't we simply build antimatter engines like on the Enterprise? Well, antimatter exists. But it's only created naturally in rare ultra-high-speed collisions, such as those that happen inside solar flares. Antimatter is a particle of normal matter with its electrical charge reversed and dramatic things happen when antimatter and matter meet. Total annihilation, releasing huge amounts of energy. If I had a teaspoon, a teaspoon of antimatter, I can essentially mimic the power of a hundred hydrogen bombs. That's how efficient an antimatter engine would be. 